Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Top Gun Maverick. First off, this is a good movie, and I think if I had to take 30 minutes out of this movie, I think this would be a great movie. So first off, I'm a sci-fi kind of nerd geek, and I have to be in the mood to watch something that kind of imitates real life. It's rare, and, you know, times I'll go, okay, I'm going to watch a war movie. I, I tend to go probably westerns, but in this case, it's a movie that's been recommended. I'm a fan of the original one when it came out, but I'm not uh, someone who watches it all the time. And, look, Tom Cruise is a, you know, Top Gun star. He's... When he's on, he's it's amazing. Uh, he he could have even do movies that bomb, but he just keeps coming back, you know, looking young. And like I said, this is a good movie. I just wish it was a little shorter and would have really hit home some of the points that really work in this movie. Because it's got some great nostalgia to it. Um, one of the sweet moments is like with Val Kilmer and... I thought they could have just toned down a little bit of the, you know, angst with the inter, you know, new team thing. But it works. And like I said, I'm looking at uh, how long is this movie? Um, you know, it's like a two hour movie. And I think this could have been an amazing, great, you know, hour and 40 minute movie. Right now with a, yeah, but you know, I guess that would be okay. But anyway. You're not going to get any really, uh, I'm not going to shit on the movie in that aspect, because it really works. It's a, you know, if once you get past, like I said, just be wanting to be in the mood to watch something like this, because I just hardly ever am. Again, um, I watch some Tom Cruise movies, and they're just duds, and they don't work, but he's always trying, he's always, you know, at the top of his game, and, you know, he's, he's like, you know, you got to put him in a small group of people who are just amazing actors that harken back to the old days of, you know, that star that stayed with a certain, you know, WB or, or I'm going, you got to go even more back than that. But, you know, the classic movie stars and he's still got it. So I got to give him credit. Like I said, seeing Val Kilmer was great. And you got some people who really work like Jennifer Connelly works in it. Just would have trimmed it down a little. but. Um, Ed Harris, he shows his face, and he's always classic to be in a, you know, a, a military role. And, look, this movie, again, if this movie was an hour and 40 minutes, I'd be raving about it. Because it's got some great feel to the cinematography, the airplanes and the airplanes, you know, the jets, and just everything is you know, amazing in that sense. And if it's because Tom Cruise puts his money where his mouth is, you got to give him credit. But the director is Joseph Kosinski. You know, I'm not really too familiar with it. Um, so, I, you know, I look at the plot and it's pretty good. Um, they make the hint of some sort of uh, relationship thing. And like I said, it's a little on the weak side, but you're going to put a movie out like this, it's going to, it's going to warm people's hearts, you know, that he, you know, he's going to finally settle down with a woman and stuff. And the crew, the team, so, in in the sense of the story, I, I enjoyed it, like I said, and I might be bringing it up, but just to have it a little shorter would have been amazing, and that's why I keep, I'll bring it up, I keep bringing it up, it's just, when you're in the movie and it's got you, it's great. And you're just moving along with, you know, how they film things. I, maybe the music was a little weak for me, but again, I'm just nitpicking at a what I consider a really good movie that most people are going to say is great. So you, you can see it right there. And the, like the plot, he's a test pilot. He's never achieved rank because, you know, he breaks the rules and all that stuff. And it works. He's charming in and he's got the old nostalgia going, but he's got to be uh, uh, a different role now. And I was hoping they were going to keep that role because when they call him back to the Top Gun, 
he thinks he's going to be a pilot and they want him to teach new um, pilots the best of the lot. I think they have to like choose, like not everybody can make it on this mission. And when the team gets together, there's a little bit of stuff that, uh, you know, it's, it's a little, for me, a little weak, but again, it is what it is. It's, um, it's got history. It makes sense in that way. And, you know, again, you got good actors all around. Um, who's the guy who plays, uh, Miles Teller? It works, but, you know, the goofy mustache, and I know why they did it. I just would have, you know, held back on the, the mustache, but, and, they got a really dangerous mission, and they, you know, how are we going to get it done? We want you to teach, and he's got to teach the new top class. And I was hoping he would stay that way. Again, it doesn't ruin the movie, but as you see him progressing, and there's some character growth there because, um, and again, Val Kilmer's input, just would have enjoyed to see them refrain and have him really show what it's like to be a commander in the station or, you know, on the carrier who has no control over anything, who could, you know, go out there and be the great dogfighter or pilot, and, but he's got to sit back and trust his new students. And they do that for a while. And, and like I said, this amazing shit in this movie and the progression of the plot really... It's only hampered, like I said, by, you know, some maybe filler stuff that I didn't feel was needed. And then they do the twist where, no, he's going to be the pilot. He's going to lead the pilot because um, as soon as, uh, well, spoilers, as soon as something major happens, they've been, they're just waiting to get, can him and get him off the project. So they can him but he, what he does is he steals a plane you know according to that and he does the actual mission in like 25 seconds faster than they were trying to do it which was dangerous enough but because he did it they have to keep him but he's not going to be the teacher he's going to be the the lead pilot and it's a little bit of a weird thing because you have to you know, you're watching this movie and it's just pulse pounding craziness with jets and stuff but there's a plane with one seat then there's a plane with two seats there's a plane so it's a little um i had to wrap my head around that like where was his back seat but there are for certain things they do whatever but in any case he's got to be the lead guy and he chooses the team like who makes the cut and they do a good payoff here because there's a guy you're really you know, you don't want to like, he's, like, he's got that whole, um, you know, written trope for him, and he does it well, uh, I don't know the guy's name, but, um, there's, uh, a, a, you know, it's, it's a little, it's real in that sense, it works, but they paid off at the end with him, and I thought that was really well done, but there was a moment there, I thought that we're going to turn this into a, um, behind enemy lines type movie, because I, I was a little shocked, like, he got me for the ride, it just felt like a, a bump in the road to get to the next pulse pounding thing. And I guess it makes sense that it works that way. But I, I remember like rolling my eyes like, you got to be kidding me. But again, this is a good movie. A borderline on great if you're just looking for me to say, if they cut this down to an hour and 40 minutes, this is a great movie. And when you get to this point where uh, it's behind enemy lines type thing, I just was like, oh my God. They got to do something drastic, right? Of course they do. And you get a throwback to the original movie <clears throat> with the F-14s. And there's a... Um, well, part of the reason why Tom Cruise is even involved is there's a new fifth generation fighter jet. And the U.S. military is admitting that... Um, they don't have air superiority no more. And, like, if you look at the planes they're using, whatever it is, uh, F-18, something, something, whatever the fuck, that this new one is, you know, so much more advanced. And they actually highlight it in the movie, I thought it was well done, where their reactions were like, how the fuck did they do that? Like, what was that? Because this enemy fighter's doing 
things that they wouldn't be able to do. All this is great. It is done on a you know level that's uh, you know it raises the bar. That you could say Tom Cruise always does that, right? He always hang himself off a fucking plane. Good for him, man. Look, forget about his freaky religious shit and all that nonsense. His man's job is to make movies, and he, for the most part, he makes really good ones. Or he's always good in it, even if it flops around him or it doesn't, you know, pick up. So kudos to him. I just wish I knew the director better. What I don't know what he's from. Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon, Age of Extinction, in addition to the American version of The Ring, and its sequel. Oh no, that's a screenplay. There. Uh, Tron Legacy. Oh, I don't know, this guy doesn't, he's the director? Okay, well look, kudos to him. Kudos, he made a good movie. And I just probably in the minority. It's probably got a lot. I heard a lot of good things about it, and it was never like you know bummed out that I had to watch it. Just like I said, I had to be in the mood, and it does it. It does it well. Uh, again, the it ends. It doesn't end thing because what this because what the movie does pretty well is if it's letting you know there's like a timer, you sure as shit are gonna get that timer. So. In the back in the eighties, someone might have said you got two minutes for the mission, and then there'd be ten minutes of the movie just showing different aspects of those two minutes. <clears throat> but when you get to the point where this is a countdown, the mission has to be either a failure or a success. They do it, and they do it, you know, by the book. You no, know, from what I could tell, no funny games. Like it's like the time is let's say two minutes thirty seconds or fifteen seconds. And you can be aware in some movies where that gets blown out, and you're like, wait, 15 minutes have gone by. Isn't, isn't that bomb supposed to go off? Like, I think there's a Batman movie that did that. Anyway, you got your mission, success, failure, and then, like I said, it goes to a behind-the-enemy-lines type movie, which I was really surprised. But you got to somehow get these main ca two characters to, you know sync up and get over this shit because they don't get over it to the end of the movie and that's another little spoiler thing um i think miles teller is playing uh the character who died in the first movie son goose's son i think uh and it um has a whole history and story and like i said that works and it's believable you know i saw the movie it happened <laughs> you know that type thing um but the mustache is again a little too much but look, again, this is, if you're going to recommend a movie, this is it. This is the uh, ball being raised for these type of movies. Because I'm always amazed that, like, um, this happened with the monster type movie. So like, I'll just go to Sharknado real quick or, you know, t Tarantula Lava, fucking Peacock Bird, Snake Hybrids movies that are all out there. Anytime a major movie would come out, they would some company would make a fucking spoof or like a big copy a bit like pacific rim became you know fucking atlantic uh you know so i don't know whatever the fuck if this movie's raising the bar i'm curious to see what it's uh if there was someone attempting that because you know these guys got you know sick cameras training um if they're using cgi it's fucking amazing you know for the mo most part so, again, this is definitely something you recommend to people. Um, but like me, I'm just a little weird with like, hey, you know what? It took me so long to watch this. I just have to be in the mood. But I'm glad I watched it. It's uh, Again, I was a fan of the old movie. I remember watching it. And, you know, it might not be in my wheelhouse of things to watch all the time. But you get those good feelings. Like I said, the nostalgia is a very... Uh, powerful tool and it uses it well so maybe the music's a little weak and the runtime but 
details are just minor when you're talking about getting an ensemble cast where Tom Cruise has got to be a teacher. He's got a new team going out. He's got to teach these people how to do this mission. And the interplay was pretty good. You're not really bogged down with too much where, you know, I tend to roll my eyes a lot at these fucking things. Especially when they try to do, like, serious love things or have a guy be a real dick for no fucking reason because he's just an arrogant dick. But Eric, the actor, does it well. They pay it off at the end. And, you know, it works. So I can't sit here and just, like, trash on the movie. I am curious about, like, how they did some of the stuff because... You know, Tom Cruise is known for doing all his own shit. <clears throat> I'm not surprised if, um, well, I did read real quick the, uh, thing like they were putting like new, uh, cameras on planes and stuff and like $11,000 an hour, uh, to use the planes and pilots and stuff. So, again, you don't see this type of thing a lot. And that I, uh, I gotta admit to my friend, you know, Justin telling me, um, a lot of times when we're bullshit and he brings it up like it's a good movie to watch. I'm glad I did. So again, just gotta be in the mood, but the all it all works. Um I wish I can give more credit to uh the director in the sense of, you know, knowing stuff like oh he's he's up and coming director. <laughs> I just you know. Oh look at Tom Cruise, fucking I don't know how old he is again with his nonsense he believes in that man just produces movies that are just you know, for the most part, really good. And, yeah, I could go without the fucking love thing or the ongoing, I'm a douchebag, you know. You know, and the little things they add in to fill it up and make it a little real where you got an hour and 40 minutes of this movie is bonkers, fun, craziness. Again, raising the bar with some shit. I just find some of the stuff a little weak in aspects that aren't going to make a difference where people just want to see a movie and the nostalgia, like I said, is there. He's on his fucking motorcycle. They redo kind of shots that, you know, you, you recognize maybe from the first movie and the picture at the end. It's just, it's there. Um, like I said, I there's some actors in here that really pull off just being a side character. And, and it, again, it's pretty rare. Uh, that it, it comes together like that. So it's, you know, you're not really let down in, in places where I usually find that, like I'm looking and things on the outside start drawing my attention. You know, this this actor, you know, he's got a little minor role, but he's got to be there in the backseat and, or in other movies to that extent. And it just seems to work. Again, uh, what are you going to say? It's a... Probably I'll go look again, because I usually do my thing, and then then go see what people are saying about it, so I try to avoid that. And I got a feeling this is just going to be, there's not going to be many negative reviews about this. I Like I said, uh, could someone blow up, uh, you know, make it worse than it is, considering I wanted an hour and 40 minutes, so, but I wouldn't consider it, because it is two hours, it really, you know really something to complain about too much i mean fun great you know i would almost say breakthrough stuff like when you're watching the matrix back in the day i can imagine if i was i, I could knew i watch it with a real air force pilot like what he turned to me and go holy shit holy shit you know this is you, rare to do this and like how real it is um now that i'm looking at it like some of the things they did, they, you know, they had to train the actors to do G-forces and stuff, and good for them. Uh, just, well, IMAX, okay, film for, uh, just a really, you know, I, I'm almost tempted to say it is a, it's a great movie, but uh, just being a personal thing, it's not. But, again, if it was, you know... <laughs> The Witcher, Lord of the Rings, you know, I don't know what I'd fucking, uh, what my bias would be leaning towards, but this is a total recommendation. I mean, I'm doing this thing so late. It's just, you know, what the fuck do I think about this movie? And what does it matter at this point? But I enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I, um, <laughs> the last time I went to watch this movie and I fucking saw 
the um, thumbnail or whatever the fuck it's called for the Northman. Okay, which is after I did my podcast, I, people are calling it a fucking masterpiece. Okay, I I don't fucking get it, but this is an all around you can't go wrong movie. Nostalgia, fun. Tom Cruise is just great in it in that sense. Um, not too much bogged down in bullshit. And you're going to really start to not like the douchebag on the team and it pays off. And, you know, in that, in that case, pretty smart. Uh, now, does the screenwriter or. Let's take a look really quick. Uh, oh, that was the one was talking about the Transformers. So let's not talk about that guy. Uh, no, I don't know that name. Uh, da, 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 da. oh, the usual suspects. Nineteen ninety-five. He got an award. I don't know. This is uh maybe it's lightning in the bottle. You know, Tom Cruise gets approached. They pay him a certain amount of money, and you know he's gonna. He seems like the type that is like gonna get what he wants and product of the movie. Although, then would you think that he doesn't have movies that bomb? But even the movies that, that flop or that bomb, they look great and like the stunts are fucking bonkers. And he does his part. So I do talk about like how, how editing should be important and going back to things I talk about in certain movies like uh, I watched Morbius and I enjoyed the movie. But I can look at it and not, you know, defend it as a fucking masterpiece or anything. But it had to feel like someone who was good at editing who went in who loved with the project and tried their best and just, you know, and this one, I don't, you know, I'm sure Tom Cruise demands that his reputation and everything brings, you know, brings that to the movie. I mean, it's fucking Jennifer Connelly, though, doing simple scenes and it, like it works. So give me the fucking motorcycle and just trim this movie down for like 20 minutes or so. I don't know. It's felt a tiny bit long. But again, these aren't things that I would blow up and make a fucking rant thing on. It's just, you know, it's probably what movies are. And here I am, like, I'm watching the fucking, I watched the fucking Hobbit thing again. Uh, it's a four-hour fucking movie, so. I guess, it again, it's, what am I passionate about? What am I really into? And I was in the mood to watch this. I regretted watching The Northman the last time. And I'm going to recommend this. This, I don't know, like, you know, I'd love to shit on the movie in that sense, but it's it works, and it got the feels, it's got a lot of the thrills in it, and damn, the fucking camera shots and the way they film things is just fucking, just elevates everything. It's really fucking crazy how they do it, and I'm reading more of it, like, uh, just good, you know? It reminds me a little of also like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and not a lot of people like the Terminator 3 movie, but they were talking to him about cutting things out. He's like, no, we need that scene. He's like, okay, oh, whatever. 13 million to have a fucking truck plow through like three streets and break buildings with a crane, whatever the fuck it was. It, you know, I think Tom Cruise is that guy too. He's gonna demand it. People have been probably wanting this fucking movie. I'm surprised they didn't get the original actress chick I don't remember her. I don't remember the movie that much in that sense. Although I get it confused with the Iron Eagle movie. Was that Louis Gossett Jr.? And he had like a Tom Cruise <laughs> imitator, I guess, at the time. They also had like fucking five movies. So anyway, Top Gun Maverick. Good movie, borderline on great. Most people are going to say it's great. Fun romp, beginning to end. Pulse pounding type things that actually work because it could fall flat watching some of these things. I'm sure it's really difficult to really make a, someone feel like, you know, th this plane is given this much Jesus. I'm reading it now and, you know, the right sound effects work. And if I'm going to nitpick this thing at all, it's weak music overall and it's a little long for me. But there you go, Top Gun Maverick. Watch it, fun, groundbreaking maybe for some people with how they film things. Again, I would be, think it would be interesting to have like Air Force people watch this. Like 
it's got to be something. You know, I might even look into that. Like, is there a reviewer? Is, uh, you know, an Air Force pilot from Air Force pilot? It must be pretty cool. In any case, Top Gun Maverick, good movie, borderline great. Watch it. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.